Some animals very clearly got the middle finger from evolution. This though, this is the portrait of privilege. There is no animal that's gotten more green lights from God than a bulletproof, saw-toothed, predatory sledgehammer with hyperintelligence, parkour prowess, and the ability to cryo-sleep like Captain America. Yeah, that menace is alive. Find out if you want to. Brumation's pretty much hibernation for reptiles. Basically a built-in power save mode for animals that already don't use much of it. But it means this is an apex predator that can survive a fade with Elsa. Cause gators and the like can survive a winter in a frozen pond by turning their metabolism all the way down. Where they'll just stick their snouts above water and leave the rest under the ice where it's actually warmer until fate decides to defrost them. Mind you, brumation's not sleep and gators will move around on days when it's warmer. But it also means this ill-mattered iceberg can probably sense you walking past it, thanks to another superpower we'll get into later. Cause you're gonna learn that not only is the Mame Gecko the most disrespectful addition to the food web, it is humanity's greatest predator. And whatever Oppenheimer felt when Hiroshima got hit with a massacre mushroom, isn't even 1% of the regret felt by whoever unleashed an armor-plated equalizer onto Earth. But real quick, I'm gonna be saying crocodiles for most of this video, but a lot of this replies to crocodilians as a concept. I cannot express how much every part of a crocodile's body is designed to author your obituary, and that includes its walnut-sized brain. Because crocodiles are intelligent on a level that should deeply disturb you. Both mugger crocodiles and American alligators will lure birds in by using sticks and twigs as bait to snatch their souls. That would already be bad enough, without the implication. The implication is that Satan's snaggletooth stapler is able to take seasonality into account since they're aware enough to pull this in the middle of nesting season. They're like Batman with prep time, except they've had a hundred million years to plot. Another revelation is that the dinosaur time left behind will hunt as a pack, with scientists watching a group of crocs swimming in a circle around a shoal of fish, making the circle tighter and tighter until the fish were forced into a bait ball, just for the chompy boys to take turns cutting across the center of the circle to get their share of fish. There's another example where a massive saltwater a crocodile scared a pig into running into a lagoon, where it was immediately jumped by two smaller crocs waiting. Now the implication there is somehow the giant salty knew exactly what direction to force the pig. Crocs have been doing this, it's just as expert Vladimir Diné will tell you, it's incredibly difficult to study an animal that does its damage in the water. Cause if you're in the water studying hunting crocodiles, chances are they're also studying you, and their thesis statement is your headstone engravement. Vlad has put in over 3000 hours of watching crocs, and has witnessed things like a stronger, heavier croc driving fish to shore, with smaller, more agile teammates hawking cornered fish. Now you might ask, how do the crocs share their victims, and honestly that might be more unsettling than how they murk them. Chris Campbell was a contractor for the Okefenokee Wildlife Reserve, which meant over a decade of watching what a neighbor gator is capable of. One day he showed up to work with 60-something gators posted up by the boat docks. What he described were two groups of gators, one in the semi-circle formation driving fish to the shallows and using the boats to corner them, and the other group in the background resting, or more like waiting. Cause whenever a gator from the hunting party caught a fish, he'd immediately retire to the waiting group, and one of the waiting crocs would sub in and take his place. This went on for hours, until it got hot enough for them to clock out and go their ways. But when Campbell went back the next morning, like clockwork, the morning crush was still there. Same time, same place, same agenda. That's a level of teamwork and foresight most people aren't willing to accept from a prehistoric snap trap. But your ignorance ain't bliss, in fact it's what sustains them. In many spots in Africa and Australia, people are warned never to get water from the same place more than once, and definitely not pass twice. It's cause crocodiles will memorize patterns and clock your daily routine, and getting too predictable around a professional camper means the croc will take note, just to ambush you the next chance they get, and they'll use very little energy to do it. It's also why studying them is like edging death, choose the same spots repeatedly and at best the croc notices and avoids you with no regard for your research. And at worst, Senor Snappy studies your habits enough to put a halo around your head, that's a real PhD. Which makes the crocodile a gift wrapped F you to any creature of habit, and why the most dangerous kind of croc is actually an investigator. But if you watch this video, you could be the smartest thing missing a spine, you'll still be a living doormat if you don't have the hardware to back it up. And no animal has more disrespectful hardware than a motion activated bear trap. Crocodile is the most physically unfair predator on earth, because virtually every body part has been expressly designed to flatline you. They have the strongest recorded bite force of any animal, at 3700 pounds per square inch, making its jaw a steel trap, capable of damage on par with victims of war. But maturing's realizing, it's the teeth as much as the jaw. Sharks have serrated teeth to slice through prey. 
Crocs have death cones designed to keep prey in its custody, meaning if a leather log bites you, you have the lowest chance of escape, which gets worse when the croc proceeds to drown you, and with crocs being able to hold their breath for up to two hours, trust that you'll pass tense long before he does. The only thing with those teeth is, they're great for grabbing, useless for chewing, so they'll slam prey into chunks and swallow them whole, which leads to the most broken finishing move of any animal, the death roll. But crocs also have the most acidic stomach of any animal, and can dissolve bones, horns, and hooves. But they're also bloodbenders, with a heart that controls exactly where the blood goes, and a feeding croc will direct blood to its stomach, so the carbon dioxide in it only makes the acid more corrosive. And good luck fighting back when nature made an evolutionary aggro weapon borderline bulletproof. Crocodiles are covered in osteoderms, and armor plating blocks the teeth of other animals from doing damage. Which is why there's more than one case of a croc tank in a gunshot, but the nasty work is what you can't see. The scales are said to manipulate water in a way that means a 20 foot problem doesn't make ripples. The osteoderms create countercurrents that cancel out any disturbances made in the water. Basically cloaking technology, but in a steroid reptile. The same osteoderms can store heat for when it gets too cold and then release it when it's too hot, so they also have a built-in thermostat. There's one more trick under its skin, and it's that when crocs spend all that time underwater, lactic acid starts to build up in them. But because osteoderms are made of mineralized bones, the minerals will slightly dissolve if the acid gets too high, releasing carbonate and bicarbonate ions that neutralize the acid and raise the pH. Crocs are nature's Nepo babies. Evolution gave them every cheat possible. And with Salties growing up to 20 feet long and pressing the scales at often over 2,000 pounds, it's not like they needed more handouts. Especially when you realize, except for a tail that stores fat like a camel's hump, Crocs are almost all muscle and look like a snake with legs with Kratos' knives for teeth. That tail is a lot stronger than you think, and the same one that can briefly airlift a plus size predator would absolutely shatter your leg with a direct hit. But there might not be anything more unsettling than crocodiles having probably the most advanced eyes of any animal. Eyes nature put right at the top of their heads, so snappy lads can plot on your life while cosplaying as a log. Eyes that have a protective nictating membrane, so even attacking one of their few weaknesses still requires two-factor authentication, especially since they can retract their eyeballs. And like dolphins, crocs can rest half their brain at a time, meaning the of Steve Irwin can sleep with one eye open, and studies show they're more likely to do that when they're around humans. Also, they have night vision because of course they do, and that's not even the most broken part of their vision. The fovea is a small part of the retina, but it's where vision is the sharpest, and it's what you use when you focus on a specific word on a page, or play Where's Waldo. And when you move your eyes to look at something, got him, that's you putting the image on your fovea. The problem is, what is a tiny dot for us is the shape of a skid mark in a crocodile. Having a fat fovea means nature's favorite predator can scan an entire shoreline without moving its head. If you still don't follow, get a book and try to read the entire page without moving your eyes once, and then realize how much of a middle finger this creature's existence is. Especially since the titanic scale demon has cockroach levels of plot armor. Crocodiles can tank freezing cold, extreme heat, radiation, and can live in waters contaminated with heavy metals. And with the diet of a morgue, they're resistant to nastiness like anthrax, cholera, and the most potent substance on earth, botulism. They also have negligible senescence, meaning they don't really age the same way most animals do. It doesn't make them immortal, but it does mean that they never really stop growing and can easily pass 100. In fact, right now, there's a croc that's been alive since 1900. Like the year. Which means, other than a Greenland shark, I don't think there's another predator that can outlive a croc, and with them being nature's favorite, of course some sick muppet made them resistant to cancer. And many believe it's thanks to their gut, because the gut microbiome is said to be a huge part of your health, and a crocodile's gut community manages to uno-reverse cancer. An experiment found that their gut bacteria put the brakes on cancer, and slowed the growth of cancer-causing cells. Basically, it's a cancer to cancer, and now I understand why Buddy from Spider-Man crashed out, especially since it turns out alligators and crocodiles can regenerate a lost tail. Crocodilian blood also throws hands with bad bacteria, and can dead diseases like salmonella and staph infections. This thing's built like a Dark Souls boss, and the fact that they can survive several acts of God yet get neutralized by a rubber band around the mouth proves Nature has a sense of irony, but that's a lot better than getting folded by some of the diseases out there, and there's some stuff that Satan would second guess. Viewer discretion is advised, and this time, I'm so serious. I'm not being cute. If you're queasy and not built for body horror, go here before I ruin your whole day. Your lack of action will be considered consent, I'm just saying. Last chance, you can still go back. Alright, this is on you. Three, two, happy Halloween.
I didn't even curse, I did gag a little. This is a deer suffering from papillomavirus, and it's usually not harmful unless you value mental health. But it can also cause Lovecraftian rabbits, with those affected seeming to grow tentacles. And if you live in Colorado, you've definitely seen these jackalows popping up. And according to this article, the cutaneous quills are caused by the cottontail papillomavirus. This is the worst thing you can see while a mile high because of the altitude. We fear most what we can't understand, and sometimes it feels like fear is the only thing stories like these are selling, and how that story is told could be the difference between being informed and building a panic bunker expecting the end of the world. That's where ground news comes in, because if we're talking about a mutant deer with flesh bubbles for sanity's sake, you better be informed. Their app and website pulls from over 50,000 sources worldwide to give you context about each source's biases, reliability, and ownership. It allows you to compare how different outlets cover the same story and see where the truth really lies. And with the rabbit story, Ground News shows you over 200 sources and that most of the reporting came from the left or center. If I scroll down, I can see all the articles, and the more sensational headlines that were calling them Franken rabbits actually came from lower factuality sources. As you can guess, the higher rated outlets were the ones explaining what was going on. The internet's great for showing you things you'd otherwise be blind to, but it's also great for erasing context and mass producing misinformation. Which is why Ground News takes the mask off of who's really put a story to explain the inexplicable, and Ground News was even recognized by the Nobel Peace Center for their efforts in media literacy. If you'd like a guide to navigate random rabbit holes, no, not this one. By now, you already know, I partnered with Ground News to get you 40% off the same unlimited access vantage plan I'm using. Make sure you go to groundnews.com slash casualgeo or scan the QR code on screen to subscribe for only $5 a month, so hopefully I will never have to look at that deer again. But you'll never see a croc with something like that. It just wasn't enough nature gave an overachieving of guano the most broken build on the planet. Their abilities would get them banned in any game. Like I said, a crocodile on a stakeout can hold its breath for hours, and alligators can survive a five month cold plunge. Low metabolism means they live on power safe mode, and it's also why a crocodile can go up to two years without eating. God bless the bloke that breaks his fast. It means crocodiles can wait out the times that would surely wipe out anything else, and now you see how an aggressive snout managed to reject the same death that found the dinosaurs. Crocs have been around since Saturn was single and still waiting on a ring, and the fact that they can just suspend animation by putting their life on layaway just proves that they really are the teacher's pet of evolution. Also, crocodiles are more than capable of running fast enough to catch you off guard, or at least a Cuban croc will, and this is the one time I wish it were AI. And whoever said you should run away from one in a zigzag is guilty of attempted murder. That is a myth that only ups the chance that you trip and go out like a horror movie. You could climb a tree, except they can do that too, because honestly, why not? They do everything else. And not only do they climb trees, according to scientists, they do it regularly, with them finding grown adults 10 feet in the trees and juveniles as high as 30. School taught you to be afraid of quicksand and giant Venus flytraps, yet somehow a drop gator was an unmentioned possibility. They can also climb fences, of every kind. And again, you already know where this was taken. This is flagrantly Floridian. I think now's a good time to mention crocodiles are more related to birds than to a turtle, snake, or a lizard, meaning we just barely missed out on this freak being able to fly. Flightlessness aside, another thing they can't do well is see underwater. Their aquavision is actually kinda mid. We're this far into this video and we finally found a weakness. But don't get too excited, cause nature overcompensated with something outrageous. Those pits seasoning the crocodile are pressure sensors, and it's how the ultimate predator can clock the smallest vibrations in the water. It completely erases their lack of water vision, in fact you could hogtie a croc, blindfold it, throw it into a pool, and let a leaky faucet drip on a complete opposite side. The croc will still know exactly where the water's coming from. While you won't know where he is until you wake up at a Tupac concert. And when murkiness brings the water's visibility to zero, they'll T-pose spreading their legs and fingers to maximize an already broken ability, and speaking of fingers, their jaws are more sensitive than yours. A dinosaur beast breathing like a nose cape, but let the croc tell it, that's the only demon that's slaying. And I don't know if I said this already, but let's not just walk past the fact that they can regenerate their tails like a starfish's arm. But the thing is, bears are berserker builds on steroids, cats are four-legged fur ninjas, and orcas are the most cerebral serial murkers on the planet. What is it about this semi-aquatic bioweapon that makes me confidently call them the scariest predator on Earth? Oh, simple. They're a predator's predator. Is there a single predator that generates more anxiety? in other predators, even cheetahs aren't fast enough to cheat death in the hit range of the reptile, and the king of the jungle gets a severe vibe check when they're out of their element. Not to mention, crocodiles will savage sharks to the point where many believe bull sharks actively avoid them. The crocodile is the worst kind of predator, one with zero prejudice, which makes them a massive threat to the most successful predator of all time. Here's the thing, when a lion, tiger, or bear becomes a man-eater, it usually means something's wrong and they can't hunt their normal prey. 
Polar bears and Komodo dragons are famously less picky, but their home base is so remote that most people will never have to worry about them. Not only do crocodiles practice the worst kind of equality, they're basically everywhere. It's not that they actively go after humans, just that they genuinely don't care. Which is why it's the crocodile that turns more humans into hashtags than any other large predator by a lot, and considering how and where they do it, that number could easily be higher. Even if you don't get killed by a crocodile, there's plenty of psychological damage that comes from being targeted by one. In 2003, two Australian teenagers spent 22 hours trapped in a tree while being stalked by a 13-foot crocodile below, and the entire night was the two keeping each other awake so they wouldn't fall in. To make it even worse, thanks to a flood, the waters kept rising, and the croc seemed to taunt the two by showing off the body of the third friend it had already caught. The two would be saved, but only by helicopter. Cause, cause really, what else can you do in that situation? Well, they didn't get it as bad as Ryan. The New Zealander also got stalked by a croc almost as big as the 20-foot kayak he was traveling in and held captive on Governor Island, where the predator repeatedly made his presence known. Two weeks with limited food and water and a 20-foot undertaker that would chase him every time he tried to leave, and Ryan was hanging on by only a thread by the time he was rescued. That's the horror of being hunted by the greatest sit-and-wait predator of all time. Cause time is their greatest resource, you'll never have more of it than they do. And the fact that the big ones can go a year or more between meals and do their dirty work in murky water makes a man-eating crocodile the most difficult kind to deal with. Gustave was a Nile crocodile believed to be 20 feet long and well over 2,000 pounds. Believed because despite allegedly putting 300 people in past tense and being repeatedly shot, the serial killer croc was never officially caught. And despite reports of his death because he was believed to have hatched in the 50s, there's a small but legitimate chance he's still out there, biding his time just waiting for someone to wander close enough to become 50 shades of prey. You never see them until it's too late, and once you do, you might not see them for another year. It's a self-cloaking carnivorous convict that the land before time left behind. This is the scariest predator on Earth. But of course, it's just an animal doing what comes naturally. They're not evil, just forged by millions of years of character development and mass extinctions. It's not hard to see why Steve Irwin wrote so hard for them, and I wouldn't be doing khaki Jesus justice if I convinced you to hate them. Now, with them it's respect, and a very healthy helping of fear, because moral of the story, always beware the old man in a game where men die young. And you always beware the landlord of croc country, because you'll never know when rents due.